I'm Andrew Armstrong, welcome to the back office. Sorry if my videos of late tend to be a bit hard wary, but uh, that's the way I'm rolling this week, month, year. This is so cool. This is the genesis. You're witnessing the genesis of one of my bigger projects, real projects. Time for a real project. And this real project requires one of these. And not this one, because it's a really scuzzy one, but one of these. Can you guess what it is yet? There's a microcontroller board. This is an opto-isolated relay board. Mm -hmm. No, nope. it's actually a thing I'm making for Retro Rich. You'll catch him on Twitter, but his name's got numbers in it. I might have to leave that link down below to him. In fact, I've got to zoom out. I need more room for this. And uh, I'm making something rather groovy because he's got arcade cabinets. And the problem with arcade cabinets, and I'm just gonna slide all this out of the way, is imagine that you've got these arcade machines and they're sat like this. Yup, and they've all got CRTs in them and they're, they, I don't think they're particularly high current, but if you've ever owned one, they're very buzzy and very scary and, and old school because they've got old school power slides. And when you turn them on, they go bzzzing, bzzzing, and that's the degauss. So what that is, that's a magnet inside the screen and it fires a massive magnetic pulse, a bit like this, and then makes it really tiny and then turns it off, right? So you get this big pulse and then... And what this does, this actually moves the grills within the screen and goes... And the idea is to sort of demagnetize it. So if there's any sort of, you know, inclination on that metal gauze to north or south, this is going north, south, north, south, north, south, north, south, nothing, 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 nothing. So this should end up as nothing. So when you turn on all of these monitors, not only do they all do that, they all do it at different times and for different lengths. So if you imagine T, you have a sort of time constant here. Uh, this might be T times two or uh, T plus five, whatever, right? So the problem is this one might have finished its demagnetization cycle and while this one hasn't, and this one might actually be affecting this a little bit. And not only that, there's a big current spike because you've just turned them on and then they've gone bang, big current, and then settle down. Probably not settle down to zero current, that would be a bit impossible, but yeah, maybe here. So the idea is, basically, and I'll turn my pad over, because I'm not very organised with my pad technologies, is that I'm going to make something with this micro, and this will be set up to a, a nice prop type switch. So it could be like the two keys, or a big um, one of those axe switches. So the idea is, um, I said axe switch, axe switch, what the hell am I thinking? I'm thinking of the switches that are like this. Ah, oh, scissor, guillotine, come on, someone help me out. So the idea is, you know, you, you throw the switch, <laughs> and it'll turn on your machines. So but what it's gonna do, it's gonna be really cool, because if I'm gonna, I'm gonna draw like a bunch of machines. I could have up to eight. This is an eight output unit. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, what I could do is just go like, do. Turn it on, turn it on, turn it on, turn it on, turn it like that, you know, like sequence. When you flip that, and then when you flip, turn it off again, it'll just do the same, which will be cool. You know, that's a kind of linear, a linear time base on that. Or I'm wondering, would it be cooler to have a logarithmic time base? So it just comes on like, do, 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 do. Yeah, you know what I mean? I don't think we've got enough though to really fully experience the funness of the log time base. So I do know my friend Rich has only about four cabinets now, but you might have some more in the future. So I'll probably program them at least to do a bunch of them. Um, just looking at this relay here, look at that one. It's, it's like it's been a little bit damaged. These are probably re, uh, reconditioned or salvaged relays. Um, and while we're here, we're just gonna test the board out. Uh, the board has some markings. I'll zoom in so you can have a look see at the markings. We have a low common high, so I'm not sure. This is probably choosing whether or not it's activated on a low common or high. And here we've got DC plus, DC minus, and then all the inputs. So these are basically telling this board whether it's going to be activating on a high or a low. Uh, DC, I've got a power supply next to me. I'm going to set that for a very optimistic I'm going to go for three volts. Let's see what the relays, relays don't say what they are. I'm hoping it's three volts because a 3v3 is kind of easier to work with. 
we've got a screwdriver here. Let's, let's just plug it in and uh, we'll know what happens basically. The problem is with relays, of course, they do need quite a lot of current. So if they all um, fire off at the same time, that will test, test our power supply. So whatever power supply is going to live on the DC side of this will have to be reasonably good. So I'm just going to assume it's going to be on high. So let's just short these two out. Yeah, not hearing anything, not seeing any current draw. Let's try on a low, shall we? Nothing. Nope. I'll just throw it off the desk like I like to do. No markings underneath, but nice um, separation here for the sort of signal. So if you're using mains, I'd say that's about four mil. I'll have to consult with somebody to ensure that's a, an adequate uh, air gap here. The base says eight relay module, high low level trigger. And each relay obviously has a normally open, normally closed and a common output. So that's handy for us. But why am I not seeing anything? They're actually, oh, there's a power LED here too. <laughs> why am I not seeing anything? I'm not seeing anything because me being a numpty has bloody wired the polarity wrong. Don't do that. Jeez. I am. There we go. Do not do that. How crazy. Yeah, be a bit more careful. Don't be like Andrew. Right. Hooray! Hurrah! It is operating on high and you can hear the relay flicking away like a, like a madman. So if we take this out. Uh, one of these jumpers, which is, this is S1, so this is Relay 1. We change that to fire on low. We should see now if we, there we go, it's firing on low like a madman and not doing anything on high. So that's rather sweet. Yeah. So you can just adjust these jumpers to decide what polarity your trigger is going to be. Um, probably not so much an issue if you're using an electronic controller because you can set them however you want. And just let's have a little thinky thinky think about this from what we can see on the circuit diagram. I'm guessing we've got, uh, I can see there's an opto. You can see right there, there's the actual opto isolator and they tend to be something like a LED and a photo, um, let me put that that way and some sort of photo diode, but it could be a photo transistor. Hmm. I don't, I don't, I don't rightly know. I don't rightly know. Uh, because they're doing obviously a polarity twist, twist. I can see a transistor in there. Um, yeah, interesting. I mean, I'm thinking if you've got your coil circuit, you've got your diode, I can see the transistors on the actual diode side, which would, uh, let's let's scratch that. Let's scratch that, guys. Um, imagine you've got your LED here, and then you've got some sort of photo doodad here, and then that output is going to the input of your transistor, right? Zero volts. Let's say that's fine. Then your transistor's hooked up to the coil of the relay. Yeah, that's pretty good. And then you've got your plus five here, and then you've got a. Um, you tend to have a diode -y thing here to stop the uh, spike off the coil, whatever you call it, the discharge from going back and burning stuff out. So something like that, but how do you get it to up trigger on the other way round is uh, is curious, curious indeed. So uh, something ah, but there are t there's four legs on these opto isolators. Could it have some other gubbins inside? Who knows? I'm just going to tell you the number. It's a, a GB328F280. If you know how they work, because clearly I don't, that's just basically how they're working, um, then uh, you can let me know. But the real main idea, go guys, is to stop anything nasty from this end jumping on and destroying your sensitive electronics. How that's accomplished, again, is via with these opto isolators. How well it's accomplished, I really don't know. I mean, you can see that these power lines is grounded to this big ground plane. I mean, 
If they're connected to your sensitive electronics, then you're all screwed, right? Doesn't matter. But I'm guessing you're just protecting these eight inputs. These eight inputs to your controller module are buffered. So basically, you wouldn't use the regulated sort of power system necessarily coming off this board into that. You'd probably connect these up to a common third party power supply. So this is protected by its own regulated supply. There you go. Hopefully, you are nice and bored now and you're going to go and make your own project with this, uh, maybe switching on some garden lights or some hose or something like that. Hose. <laughs> garden hose. <laughs> Water sp uh, sprinklers. Please uh, let me know down below if you've used one of these. If you know how they work, please feel free to send me any pictures on it. And as ever, thank you for watching.